Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we're working on the 2006, it's a Chevy Cobalt, a 2.2 liter engine. The customer complaint is that the check engine light is on. They tell me that last week the light came on and a day later it shut off by itself and it was off until this morning and then it came back on again. So I did scan it to find out what's going on with it. It's, a, it's an oxygen sensor code that's in there. I think it's a P0030, uh, which is a heater circuit problem. And the other one is a P, um, P0135. Uh, so it's a bank one uh, issue. Um, I'm going to bring you up there. I'm going to show you how to check it and diagnose what the problem is, and then to go ahead and to, uh, to repair it. So uh, let me get in the, uh, in the car. I'm going to show you on the scanner what it looks like and what's going on. Uh, let's get in there and I'm going to show you. Okay, this is what it looks like. You can see the, uh, the uh, there's no, um, see the heater circuit, there's an open in, in, in the heater circuit. Most likely it's going to be the, uh, the oxygen center itself. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go under the hood and we're going to check the power supply going down to the, um, to the sensor itself. Um, so let's get underneath the hood. We're going to check that voltage to make sure it's okay. And if everything looks good, then we're just going to go ahead and to, uh, to replace that sensor. Because um, I've, I've run into this problem before, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be the sensor. So let's just check the, uh, the fuse first, and uh, then we'll, uh, we'll come right back. Okay, on this particular car, the fuse box is located underneath the hood right here. So we're just going to pull this cover off here. And then we're going to test the fuses. And if you look inside the box here, we're going to look for an ignition fuse, or an emission fuse, I should say. And there it is right there. So that would be this fuse right here. So we're just going to check it to make sure that that fuse is good. And as you can see, that fuse is good. So we know that the, uh, the, the heater circuit is, has got power going to it. Um, the sensor itself is located down here. So let me shut this car off. I'm going to pull this cover out of the way. And we're going to go down and we're going to check the, uh, the sensor down in here. So uh, we'll yeah, I know right it's back. a tight fit down here and it's hard to see anything. But this is our connector right here. I did disconnect this. And I checked the... Uh, actually, let me show you. I did go down here and check right here to make sure that there was power there, and there was power there. So that tells me that the circuit going down to the uh, to the oxygen sensor itself is is in good condition. So that we know. Um, I did check to see if there was a short to ground, uh, which there was not. And the last thing I usually do is just reach down here, grab the sensor, and then just wiggle it around, and we'll see what happens down in here if I can get it to. do anything. Alright, so let's shut this car off. We're going to go down here. We're going to take that sensor out and we're going to get a replacement for it. So well, let me shut this off and uh, then we're going to unplug that sensor and we'll remove it. I'll show you how to okay, do that. To remove the oxygen sensor, they make a couple of different tools to do that. One, you've got a socket that's slotted like this to get over the top of the sensor wire to remove it. Um, again, if you don't have this socket, just snip the wires off, put a regular socket over the top of it, and you can take it out. I don't do it like that. I use the right socket for it. This one is probably my favorite tool, just because it's easy, it's flexible, and I can get in there f mostly all the vehicles I can get to. So I'm going to use this one here, and we'll see how it goes to get that out of there. Pretty simple. We're just going to come down here. And we're going to pull this. Now, I just want to point this out to you also. I did already un pull this away from the engine itself. It was not disconnected. I disconnected it. We're just going to pull that electrical connector up. And we're going to rock it. And it comes apart like that. And then we just get down here with our tool. Let me get it on there and I'll show you how. I guess I'm not going to be able to use my favorite tool. It just doesn't fit. So let's grab the other one and we'll get in there and get that out. Okay. 
This is what I'm going to use now. It's, it's just a socket with the slot in the side of it. You can get in here with this. You can get in there with a 7 8 uh, wrench if you could do it also. I'm going to use this one here. Um, but we'll get in there and we'll, uh, we'll break it loose and uh, we'll see how it goes. Now, I know it's a tight squeeze for you to see anything going on down in here. But basically what I'm going to do is get the socket onto the sensor. like that and now I'm gonna get down there with the ratchet break it loose and as soon as I break it loose we'll, we'll just take it right out Let's see I'm gonna get in here with our ratchet it's a little bit tight Our ratchet back out. Let's see if we can take it out by hand. Okay. Just be careful, it is going to be hot, obviously. All right. That's our our sensor. That's it. All right, let's grab the new one and we'll, uh, oh, look at this. You can actually see the sensor is actually deformed. So uh, that could have been a contributing factor to the failure. But uh, let's grab the new sensor and uh, we'll put it back in. Okay, now that we got our replacement sensor, we're ready to put it back in. We're going to put a little bit of this, this um, stuff that comes with it, it makes it turn in a lot easier without uh, uh, binding or causing the problem going into the manifold. So you want to use just a little bit and you want to use it just on the thread section, just like that. All right, then you're going to take the sensor and you're going to put it back in down here where you previously took it out of and you're only going to screw it in by hand. You're not going to screw it in with a, with a wrench yet. You're going to tighten it down by hand as far as you can. And once you've got it turned in by hand as far as you can, then you put your socket back on it and we'll tighten it back up. Now remember that socket has got to go with that little notch around the wire so we don't damage the new wire. Put it on there and we'll turn it as far as you can by hand. And I'm going to take this light out of here and I'm going to tighten it up with the ratchet a little bit tighter. So let me uh, let me do that and uh, we'll tighten it up there. You don't want to break anything, so be careful. All right. Okay. All right, and once it's tight, take it out. Okay. And then once you've gotten the... Once you've gotten your sensor back tightened in there, you take your plug, and obviously you're gonna plug it back together. A little bit tough to do with one hand. Snap it together. You're gonna put your, your lock pin back through it like this. And then you're gonna plug your sensor. It comes with that new piece on the end right here. We're gonna push that back in here where it previously came out and we're going to lock it back in there. All right, now let's go in the car and let's start it up and uh, make sure we did our job correctly. Okay. Let's start this up. Start it up. 
going to see what I sense to do and to make sure everything is switching. As you can see already, you can see your heater. It's actually already, you can see a big difference here. Same thing over here. Now we're going to let this run for a couple of minutes. We're going to let it heat up. And then we're going to come right back and we're going to make sure that we're switching the way it's supposed to be switching from rich to lean and rich to lean and back and forth. So let's let the car warm up, get it up to normal operating temperature, and um, then we'll come right back. Okay, now we're warming it up a little bit. We can see that everything is switching just the way it's supposed to be. You see the heater uh, circuits are, are uh, got the proper voltage. And you can see they're switching rich lean, rich lean just as it's supposed to. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go underneath the hood. We're going to put that cover back on. We're going to wrap this up, and we're going to get this car out the door and uh, on to the next one. All right, like always, thanks for watching. Any questions or comments, uh, drop me a line, send me an email. I'll be more than happy to talk to anybody about anything. As always, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.